A delay pedal is an essential part of a healthy guitar rig, but it doesn't have to be expensive. So today I'm gonna to walk you through my top 10 favorite delay pedals under $100. I got some new stuff in the mail from a friend, Matt, at Rin and Cuff. Matter of fact, three things. Let me walk you through them and then I will play one. First up, we have the White Elk. Not only is that a great name, it's a cool pedal. So he found a strange Japanese version of the Big Muff with some kind of odd parts and he replicated it. Excited to have this in the collection. Next, we have the Super Russian. So it's a two-in-one Russian Big Muff with a buffer and boost two-in-one. And the one that I have most wanted to try that looks really unique is called the 2.5. And it is a 25 volt overdrive with a full tone stack. So I'm gonna demo that for you, let you hear it. <laughs> jump on in, I'm gonna lay a few ground rules so you know what's going on. The first ground rule is I'm using a clean amplifier and the same guitar. So I'm not gonna change amps on you or guitars. So when you hear the delays, you're hearing the difference in the delay only. You don't have to worry about, did he change amps? Did he change pickups or guitars? None of that stuff. Just know that you're only listening to differences in the delays. Number two is if you hear any overdrive or distortion, that is this gonna be coming from a TS9 Tube Screamer. Most everyone has one of these or some form of it, and we all know what it sounds like. So in the event that I need some dirt, this is what I'm going with, uh, but not the green one because I picked up the Sweetwater exclusive gold one. And I think if you have a gold pedal, you should play a gold pedal um, in every circumstance. And I think that's something I try to live by and I think you should try to live by that too. Next up will be all my prices are based off of Reverb.com because I shop on there. I think it's a really good test of the market value of a pedal. And if I find it under $100 on there, that means that you can pretty much always find it under 100 bucks on there. That's all I got. Let's jump right in. First up is the DoD FX90 Delay from 1984. You can find this on Reverb for $85. And uh, I have the original box here, and this is uh, $139.95. So it's held its value, and it's done so because it's an amazing pedal. Inside of this is a holy grail chipset, the MN3005 Bucket Brigade chip. I remember at one time when I was just getting into building pedals, that chip alone was $60 to $85 sometimes. So this has it in it. This is thick and rich and awesome vintage analog Bucket Brigade. Next up is a pedal you can also find for $85, but this one's made by my good friend Robert Keeley. It is the Keeley Mag Echo. The thing that's so great about this is that it emulates a tape echo unit almost perfectly. Like, I love it so much because I get the tape echo sound, I get the speed and modulation depth, I get all those things without the hiss and the noise of the tape heads that I usually have to deal with. This thing's perfect, and for $85, there's no excuse for you not to buy this and have it in your rig. I love to set it kind of as a pad, like an ambient background to chords and parts, and that's how I'll demonstrate it for you. This thing is a legend. You see it on so many boards, you see it on so many records, and there's a reason. This series is kind of strange. It didn't do that well. It's like a late 90s, 2000s kind of thing. You push in the knobs and lock them. It's a strange thing, but 
This delay circuit is fantastic. It lives in the digital realm of delay, but it has this tape-like repeat. It has this crisp thing to it that really no other delay has, and it cuts through a mix so well. So, for 70 bucks, it's another one that I had to put on the list. KMD analog delay. It has the MN3205 chipset. It's a little less rare, but it is a true bucket brigade device delay and $75 on reverb all day long. I like this one because it expands on the normal analog delay and it puts in a nice tone control. It's something you don't see in a lot of these pedals. So I appreciate that. And it has a nice delay length. You can do some great slap, but it gives you enough to go a little longer if you want to. And it's made really well. It's obviously a type of boss enclosure, but it's metal and it's made in Japan. And usually in most cases, when it comes to vintage pedals from the eighties, if it says Japan on it, it's fantastic. So you gotta go for it. pedal I'm about to show you is $19 brand new. You heard me right, $19 brand new. It is the Behringer Vintage Delay VD400. You can even uh, feel like the guy on the side of the box there. He's really jamming, he's feeling it. Let's open it up. Got this brand new just because I had to try it. $19. That's like a, like a number six at Wendy's. You know what I'm saying? $19. It's crazy. Anyway. Obviously, boss style thing. It's plastic, it might break on you, but it sounds really great. It has the controls that you need, and honestly, I'm kind of shocked. I don't know what else to say. I put it on the list because a lot of you guys, you might want to get into delay, but you're not sure. $19, just skip a couple coffees and try it out. without the extremely heavy Line 6 Tone Core series from the 2000s. Seriously, this is like 10 pounds. I'm getting ripped right now. Just, look, oh yeah, feeling the burn. For real though, this has most every sound that's in the Line 6 DL4, which is legendary, and uh, it does it all really well. It's got digital analog tape. You can turn trails on and off and it has a beautiful reverse delay function. I'm such a fan of reverse delay, and it's really hard to find a good one. And this has one of my favorites. Oh yeah, it's 75 bucks. You knew it was coming. I have to have a boss pedal in this episode. I may have more than one, but I can't tell you right now. But right now for $95 brand new, you can go get the DM2W Wazacraft Delay. The DM2, the classic one from the 80s, it is in my opinion, the most perfect and holy grail analog delay ever made. I used it for the topology of the Cub and so many other builders have built upon the foundation of this circuit. 
When they made the Waza version, they added a new function which gives longer delay time, but it kept all the mojo in there, all the runaway spaceship sounds, the fantastic slapback. I can't say enough about this. For $95, it is a guaranteed home run. All of us remember Dan Electro in the 90s with those little bitty plastic pedals that had food names. You didn't look at them, you didn't take them seriously. A few of us put them on our boards, but at the end of the day, we're like, this pedal's too small and I have big feet. Maybe that's just me. But either way, there were some gems in there. And one of those gems was the PB and J delay. $35 on reverb. Yeah, it's small. It's plastic. But you know, somebody gave you a chance. And you need to give this pedal a chance. On and off and long and short. This function's really cool. It does what it says. You go from long to short delay times. The slap back on this, pretty much, it's as good as anything you'll ever play. And then the long mode does some really cool stuff as well. And 35 bucks, guys. That's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> I don't say this often, but uh, sometimes I get jealous of electroharmonics. I've always been a fan, but then they put out new stuff, like really new stuff, while I'm putting stuff out. And they do a pedal that's so good that I look at it and I'm like, that's amazing. And how did they make this pedal $95? Well, the Canyon is one of those pedals. This thing has so many great sounds. Reverse delay, multi-delay, tape delay, reverb delay, octave delay, shimmer. I'm gonna demonstrate that one. It does so much stuff. It's a looper, tap tempo in, subdivisions. Yeah, I mean, it's really good to the point where me, as a pedal designer and builder, I get a little jealous. I get over it, you know, I'm fine. I'm secure, but I just go, this is fantastic. $95, I really like it. The last delay I'm gonna show you is amazing. It's $80, and here's what's crazy. I guarantee you, I give you my word, that it will hang with even some modern pedals that cost three or four times that. It's a gym, it's really old, but it's really good. It gets looked over, and that makes me sad. But I get a chance now to tell you that you should try the Boss DD20. You have five presets. You have every delay type of sound you need from tape to analog to reverse. You have tap tempo control. You have stereo. It is the most sleeper pedal on reverb in my opinion. I know that's a big statement and I'm good with that. I'm confident that if you take this delay, put it on your board, give it a chance, it might remove some new fancy dancy stuff. I said it and I don't regret it. Here are a few honorable mentions because like I said earlier, I don't wanna hurt any pedal's feelings. I feel like pedals feel when I don't talk about them. So I have to tell you, and here are the honorable mentions for this episode. The Dan Echo, it's amazing. You can find these for like 20 bucks. They're in pawn shops all over the world. The MXR Carbon Copy, as far as analog delay, I think this brought it back into the mainstream about 10 years ago and there's a reason that they've sold a gajillion of these. It's awesome. 
the Ibanez DDL Digital Delay. This is a fantastic delay. I first heard of it because Mike Fuller of Full Tone used to write these articles and he said this was his favorite delay. He ran a few and I got one and sure enough, it's amazing. It sounds very tape-like even though it's digital and uh, yeah, it's awesome. And then last but not least is the Digital Delay DFX9 by DOD. This has some cool settings and some really cool sounds. And I'm a DOD fan, so I put another one in there. Today's record time is brought to you by an album called Eat, Sleep, Repeat by a band that I really like called Copeland. So the story with this record is I bought it, I ran it in the ground, and I got really tired of it. So the other day, I put it back on and fell in love with it all over again. The songs are amazing, and I especially love the guitars. So in those comments, I want to know about an album that you played a little too much, you burn it out, you got sick of it, but then you put it on later, maybe a year, two years later, and you realize how great it is and why you love it. Put that in the comments for me, and be sure to check this out. Eat, Sleep, Repeat by Copeland. That's it for this episode. If you enjoyed it, if you found it useful, if it helped you, hit that like button. Also subscribe to the channel and then there's a bell icon as well. Hit that for notifications of future episodes. Just one little point I wanna to make to our faithful viewers who have been around for a while. We've done a lot of giveaways in the past. We're gonna to continue to do those in the future, but we're gonna do a better job of announcing those winners. We get a lot of questions like, hey, did anyone ever win those pedals? Do I still have a chance? Well. You'll know in the future because we're going to make bigger and better public announcements. Until next time, see ya.